All right. So in the in today's session, we are going to talk about configuration and managing it in our application. So when your application gets bigger, or if you're working on an enterprise-like application, it's uh, it's very likely that you're managing multiple environments. You're deploying your application to multiple environments, such as dev, test, stage, prod, and for each of those environments, you got multiple, you got different databases, different endpoints. Okay, and you have to maintain this kind of configuration properties somewhere in your application, and you you want to be able to shift uh, to different configurations based on the environment that you're deploying to, right? So this is kind of a common need, and for each language, there's a bunch of libraries and modules that they provide or the community provides to tackle issues like this, and we are going to be using a similar Go library. Uh, go package uh, which is what you can see in the screen here right now okay so I'm going to use it uh, there's a bunch of them out there I sort of like this package it's easy to use and there's uh, there and it gets you going very quickly actually but if you want to find out more about packages that helps you manage configuration then you can go to awesomego.com awesome-go.com and in fact, it's a very common website and it's got uh, popular, useful and efficient Go packages limited not only to configuration, but every kind of category that you can think of. So this is something that you want to bookmark, this particular link. So I'm going to be using this clean ENV uh, package here. It allows me to manage configurations using files or environment variables. And there's a bunch of other ways as well. But in this particular case, I'm going to use environment variables. I don't want to be reading files. Okay. So as a starting point, what I do to get it done is let me get back to my files here. So what I've done is I've gone ahead and make some made some changes. I have introduced a file called config.go. Alright. And this config.go is uh, it's nothing but it's got it's part of the Tronix uh, package. Okay, and it's got config database struct, and this struct has a bunch of fields that I would usually like to use as part of my configuration properties. For example, app name, app env. So is it a dev environment, stage, test, prod? What is it? Then the port, a port, the port that the application will be running on, host, and the log level, and we'll be adding a bunch of other properties. For example, the database. Uh, version, database username, password, any third party endpoint that you're calling, their API keys in encrypted forms and stuff like that. Okay, so you want to put it all here and it's got taggings as well. So this env tells you that uh, this configuration, config, config database is looking for a property app underscore name, looking for an environment variable app underscore name to uh, fulfill uh, to to fill in this particular field with its value okay so eventually what it's expecting to do is it's expecting to find uh, an environment variable with this name it's going to get its value and it's going to replace uh, it's going to give this app name field the value that it found from this variable all right so that's for env tag and there's also env default tag so if it couldn't find uh, this particular environment variable then it's going to just pick up the default value okay and this is handy so that even if uh, the environment variable is not set you always end up with some kind of a default value okay so you have to define a struct like this and as mentioned before in one of the sessions having tags like this is of no use I mean they don't do anything you have to have some kind of uh, some kind of logic to actually handle them and this logic is provided by this package which I have gone ahead and installed and I'm going to import it in my Tronix package but before that I define a variable uh, which is of type config database I'm not exporting it it doesn't need to be public but it's part of the Tronix package and that's why I can make use of this package in my different file here okay so what I done is I've defined an init file okay you can see that this green line so this is an addition that I've made uh, so sorry so this is an init function and it's it's a common function used in go 
it allows you to initialize a couple of things before your application runs. Okay, so in this case, I want to initialize some variables so that I can use them throughout uh, the runtime or the life cycle of my application. Okay, you could do things like initiating database connection and a bunch of other things and people in fact even go and do unconventional things and that's totally fine. I could have also done this uh, part of code in my start method as well, but it, I just think that this is more neat and clean to put it here. Okay, so uh, what I'm doing is I'm using this clean env package which I've imported and I'm calling its method read env and I'm passing it the pointer of cfg which is our config database variable. Okay. Uh, it returns an error, I'm handling it, and I'm using e.logger fatal to return it if there's an error here. So if there's a problem with getting the environments, we just want to exit the process. We don't want to go ahead and hence the fatal one here. Okay, but if there's no error, then this config uh, object will get populated, okay, when we get to start. So init will get invoked before the start gets invoked, and that's the idea, okay? So init is a kind of method uh, that, is, uh, uh, that is very unique. I mean, I think you have to spend some time finding its uh, peculiarity as well. So for example, you can use init function in each file of the same package, but I would still say that it's advisable to keep just one init file per package. So for example in config.go file as well I can have an init function and that is specific to this tronics uh, it's it's uh, it's specific to this uh, config.go file even though it is in the same package. So per package you could have multiple init uh, functions spread out across different files but then there's a problem of the execution order and if you don't want to really bother with that, then maybe you should limit your initialization to one init function per package. And that's what I'm planning to do at least so far. And so having done that, having populated the config uh, database object now, I can use it here. Okay, so I can use it. So initially I used to have a code to read the port value. Okay which I have removed now. Okay, and all I'm doing is I'm just, uh, I think this is just a duplicate code. I don't, uh, I'm, I just wanted to show you the example that I can have the same code here. Let me get rid of this. Okay, so uh, at this point when we call the start method in uh, tronics.go, config database has already been initial, uh, has already been uh, populated with its field. So I start using the config port value here directly. So just to give you a comparison, for example, I had a stronic.go file that looked like this. So I had this particular piece of code where I was reading the env variable from using OS package, which I'm not doing now. And that task has been offloaded to the package that I'm using, okay? So I'm going to save this, all right? I'm going to start the application. And you can see that my application started on port 8080. And that is because I already had set the variable to 8080. And I can hit the endpoint products and I see a list of products uh, just to confirm that my variable was set, let me show you. So the variable that I'm looking for here, if you go back to config.go, is my app port, okay? And it is set to 8080. And that's it. That's how it picked up the port, all right? But one important point is that you don't want to initialize a variable in your terminal and set it to empty. You either want to set it with a proper value or don't, you don't want them to be set at all, okay? So otherwise it's gonna, it's gonna default, it's not going to use the default value and it's going to use the value that's in this variable which could be empty as well and then it's gonna cause some issues. But generally people don't do that. They only set the variable when they are going to be using some value against it and that's totally fine. Okay, so 
that was it for today and I think it was a useful session. I'll see you in the next session where we talk about something else which I haven't figured out yet. So thank you.